Well, hey everybody, it's Matt again, and after three McCartney review videos, I thought I would change it up a little bit for a moment and jump back to my best of 1981, my top 25 favorite albums of 1981. This will be part three of that video. I'm doing them in groups of five, just because there's 25 albums and I didn't want to make a six-hour video. And speaking of six it sounds seems like it's been about six years since the last installment of this it's kind of ridiculous i should have done these maybe i should have done these all together i certainly should have done the groups of five a lot closer together than i did I, actually i think it's been like three months since i made the i made a, a part one that was 25 to 20 or whatever and 24 or whatever and then uh, part two that was up to where we are now which is number 15 about three or four months ago so I apologize, it's been a long time. If, if anyone cares or is interested, you can look at my list of videos and you can find those first two videos that are uh, 25 through uh, 25 through 16, I think, on the, the top, uh, bottom, some going bottom to top. So we're up to number 15, and uh, we're going to do five albums this time like we did the other times. And I'm going to end at number 15. is kind of a forgotten album. Uh, after the uh, claim of their first album, which is one of the greatest debut albums ever, and one of the great albums of the 70s, uh, 80s, I'm sorry, because um, there's some question that, was, that I think it came out, uh, the debut album came out like December 79 in England and January 80 in America, kind of like London Calling, one of those weird type things. I think I could be wrong, but there's anyway. The first album was great. Brass and Pocket, Radio Hits, Chrissy Hine uh, became a you know critically uh, acclaimed, became a star for a while. Pretenders were a big deal. Then of course the Pretenders came back in '84 with the Middle of the Road and um, and um, My City Was Gone had MTV hits and all. This was their second album, which just sort of. Uh, uh, people paid attention to it at the time because it was a follow-up to their great first album but in the years since then it's been kind of forgotten sadly and this was uh, considered a sophomore slump of some some somewhat it was uh, people didn't consider it as good as their first album which it's not but it's, it's certainly not bad it's a really good album it's probably probably maybe their second best album uh, of course after um, uh, what was the one with the um, um, middle of the road was uh, uh, I can't remember the title of that album now but after that album is pretty much over for the band anyway for all intents and purposes even though they kept on making albums and Christy Hines still around but they were never as good as this or the first album or um, uh, the 84 album which I'm just going blank on right now I'll think of it uh, this is kind of forgotten like I said really good album though um, it's uh you know, some really good songs. Uh, the Adulteress sounds, it starts off, has those classic uh, trademark Chrissy Hine, sexy, breathy vocals. Uh, is just right out of the first album. Message of Love is on here. This is um, one of their best songs, up there with their best songs ever. One of their best songs ever. I really love it. I Go to Sleep, uh, just like they did uh, Stop, My, Stop Your Sobbing, is a cover of an old kink song. Chrissy Hine did on the uh, first album there, which did a great version of. Joe says he, uh, Joe mean Mr. Mayo says he likes her version better than the Kinks. Uh, I think um, I have to agree with him. Kinks being my second favorite band and all, but and the Kinks do a great version on their first album. I really love their version, but Chrissy's just got that extra something something vocally and did a great job with I Go to Sleep. She does a really great job on that too. That's a song that Ray Davies wrote that the Kinks didn't actually do. They gave it to a band called the Applejacks back in the 60s that I think had a, had a minor hit with it on uh, over in England. Um, anyway, good song, good song. So uh, Talk of the Town, great. Uh, Day After Day is not the Bad Finger song, but it's a pretty good one. Um, there's just, uh, there's some, um, and Louis Louis is not, uh, is not Louis Louis, uh, the Kingsman song. So uh, there's some uh, sort of treading water moments on this album, but there's some strong moments, and it's 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 overall worth picking up, or at least worth going to YouTube and listening to. Some really great moments. Uh, this is a great band, that um, exciting band. I remember really digging them and getting into them when the first album came out, and this album, 
and then uh, sadly two of the guys uh, died from drug issues and uh, that kind of threw the band into a threw the skids on the band and uh, they rebounded long enough to make one good album after that in 84 and after that they basically weren't worth paying attention to anymore sadly but uh, shame this lineup couldn't have hung around a little more they could have been something really special they were something really special but they could have been something a little more long range I think in the 80s number 14 is another one uh, solid uh, gold by gang of four great punk rock band kind of punk rock funk band and uh, this is not quite as good as their debut album entertainment which is a classic wonderful album from the 70s uh, 78 or 79 I believe I may have the, the 78 or 79 I can't remember but this is good this is just kind of a funk punk taut guitar tight uh, rhythmic music it's uh, sparse and wonderful and um, this is kind of I, I hate to even say this because in the 90s you had all these shitty bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers trying to do this white boy funk stuff this they don't sound anything like that the Chili Peppers suck so but this is that stuff done right and it's still got punk sensibilities and it's got a little bit of funk sensibilities and uh, good lyrics good music uh, Paralyzed, Outside the Trains Don't Run on Time, Cheeseburger, really good good songs. Not quite as, as good as their debut, but pretty damn good all the same. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, now we go to, yeah, number 13. Uh, got the shrink wrap still on there. This may be my favorite Cars album. I think it is. Uh, the first two are great, Candy O and the Cars. And uh, but this one I always always really liked. I love the uh, production of it. I love singing, the guitar bits in it, in the uh, in the title track. Uh, there's really not a song on here that I don't like. I like this album front to back. I used to have this on a cassette in my car back in '81, '82. Wore it out. It's um, um, cars are sometimes uh, accused of being sort of. Uh, chilly and distant and cold, kind of like David Bowie is, but uh, I think here they're a little bit uh, more personable and warm, and just catchy and poppy and just, just really great music. I, uh, there's not a song on here that I don't like, so I just always enjoyed that album, and I'm, I'm thinking that's my favorite of theirs. Uh, number 13, that was with the Cars. Number 12, we got the Go-Go's. This isn't even my favorite Go-Go's album. That would be Talk Show, but this one's really good, too. And, um, of course, everyone knows Our Lips Are Sealed and We Got the Beat, which are probably in the range of something like Satisfaction or Stairway to Heaven at this point that people have heard them so much that they'd be happy never to hear them again. Um, and I can relate to that. But uh, there are um, a lot of other songs on here that are just as good besides the two hits that were got all the radio play that's uh, basically skid marks on my heart this town is great uh, fading fast and uh, automatic I like can't stop the world it's uh, there's a lot of good stuff on here if you like those two songs there's a lot more here that didn't get radio play back in the day and that you know people have pretty much largely forgotten it's uh, they kind of managed to sound a little bit like the old classic girl groups of the early 60s, but they also have that 80s new wave pop feel, and uh, they sound both modern and with looking back into time, and they're just, uh, I, I like the girl group stuff. I think this is great, and I always love this album. And I actually love all three of their albums, but we'll get into that a little more. And so that was, uh, what, that was... Uh, Number 12, we go to number 11. The big hit off of this is uh, Don't You Want Me, which everybody remembers all over the radio and from MTV, and it's certainly a great song. But it's like that Go-Go's album. This is another instance of there being um, a lot of great songs on here that did not get radio play or MTV play and aren't very well known. Uh, things Dreams Are Made Of. I remember hearing that on the radio a little bit, but... Open Your Heart, Do or Die, 
Love Action, that, that got a little bit of play. Uh, Don't You Want Me, of course, the classic hit. And uh, just a great album. A lot of people in England, um, they had made um, um, some albums, two or three albums before this. And a lot of people think of this as sort of their sellout album when they brought the girls in. Uh, because there used to be Phil Oakley and the other guy, I can't remember his name, that left to make uh, the band Heaven, Heaven 17. Probably wrong on that. I should have looked at my notes. But, uh, yeah, Heaven 17, I think. Anyway, a lot of people think the early Human League albums before this are better than this. And they are really good, and they may be better than this. This is kind of their commercial breakthrough album with the hit Don't You Want Me. But it's really good, too. I like it. I think it's great. And uh, I didn't care for them later when they started doing things like Human and so forth that were kind of bland songs. But this has got really good stuff. Really fun album worth checking out. One of those uh, early synth pop albums that's worth the time, that kind of music, was great around 79, 80, 81, 82. Got really boring for me personally after that. I never did get into the uh, Depeche Mode, Pet Shop Boys stuff, but this stuff's really good, really poppy, and uh, something a little bit different. Good album. So that brings us up to number 11, and we still got the top 10 to go, and... Uh, so I'll get to them. Hopefully it won't be another six months before I do the next installment. 